one of the memorable moments at Quinnipiac was the arrival on March 29th of John Lee. Quinnipiac had gone through a pretty bad period of lack of progress and lack of direction. There was a lot of pressure as to what the new guy was going to do. John was new to Quinnipiac. We were new to him. Nobody knew what to expect, but we knew we needed something. We've been very fortunate in our quest for a new president. We have succeeded in attracting Dr. John Lee Leahy to Quinnipiac College. Three of the most important qualities for evaluating or understanding a college, indeed understanding any organization, are its mission, its values, and its plans and vision for the future. When John first arrived, I think people were really optimistic about the future, but they were uncertain because the college itself was not in great shape at that time, so no one knew which way the wind was going to blow. But I can tell you with certainty, no one could have imagined the transformation that was about to occur. I'm deeply honored to have been given the opportunity to serve as the 8th President of Quinnipiac College. Quinnipiac College had prospered through the middle part of the 20th century. But from 1982 to 1986, Quinnipiac's enrollment dropped by 25% during President Richard Terry's tenure. After a vote of no confidence by the faculty, the Board of Trustees turned to a 40-year-old from the Bronx to lead the college in 1987. In terms of its reputation, it was a small local little college in Hamden, Connecticut. It did have a physical therapy program that was known Prior to the 1980s, the years when it had some decline, it was actually a very strong business school and had an accounting program that was very well respected. When I came to the campus, there were actually temporary buildings on the campus that looked like old green barracks. It had a great location. It was 100 acres uh, in suburban Greater New Haven, surrounded by a 1,500-acre state park, Sleeping Giant State Park. And for me, it was midway between Boston and New York. When John first came to Quinnipiac, he came with a vision. It's very apparent that he was young and that he had energy and that he acknowledged the fact that there was work to do and he wanted people to get on board and let's make it happen together. It was pretty clear that you're gonna grow, you have to bring students in. To do that, you're gonna to have to change it from a commuter college to a residential college. You're gonna to have to build dormitories. You're gonna need more land. You're gonna to have to add more academic programs, more buildings and facilities. You're gonna to have to increase the faculty. Quinnipiac was gonna to have to be transformed from a small local college to a, a broader regional and then ultimately a national university if it were going to succeed. During his first few years as president, John Leahy worked hard to grow Quinnipiac and its brand beyond Connecticut. In 1988, he made progress on both fronts with the launch of the Quinnipiac poll. I had something to do with a poll at another college. I already knew the potential of what a poll could do. One of the early questions I asked was whether anyone here in the faculty could do a poll. And I was told Paul Falsigno had done some polls in the business area. He was a marketing professor and he did some local polls for some local businesses. I got Paul in my office a couple of weeks later and asked him, I said, listen, I have an idea. I'd like to start a political poll. Could you do it? And he said, absolutely. We started in Connecticut and then we moved it into New York. Then we moved it to New Jersey. Then we moved it to Pennsylvania. Then we moved to Florida and Virginia. Then we did national polls. I knew the poll was going to be one of the things we would do to get the name of Quinnipiac known outside of Connecticut and to transform us to a regional and then eventually a national college. So it was very much integral to the whole comprehensive marketing plan of the university. While Quinnipiac was starting to gain recognition regionally, its facilities and academic programs had not kept pace. When John Leahy came in 1987, we had actually not built anything for the last few years. Some of our better students, the OTs and the PTs, were in a situation where we had to bus them from this campus over to a building 
on Sherman Avenue. Well, that's no way to treat your best students. So one of the initial things to try to do to get this place rolling was to try to say, how can we get our best students on campus? And when John came, we had had a building on the drawing blocks that we had presented three times to the board and couldn't get through. We kind of reworked it and came up with what became the Eklund Health Science Building. After two years of fundraising, the $4.5 million Eklund Building opened in the fall of 1989. This was a pivotal part of President Leahy's vision to grow academically. Soon, he shared plans for the School of Business and the Department of Communications. In the 1980s, um, the School of Communications was not a school, it was part of arts and sciences. Media production facilities were lodged in the basement of the library. Classrooms, Taylor Hall, typewriters. Um, it really, really reflected that small college feel, uh, but also it wasn't as technologically advanced as it, as it should have been relative to the way the media had uh, grown over, over the many years prior to the 1980s. First thing that we said to John Leahy was, if you're really serious about having a program of communications, we need a facility. After I finished the Eklund building, I told the business school, I'll get you a new building after I finished that building. By 92, when we opened the Lender School of Business Center, uh, it not only had great facilities for our school of business, but it also had a broadcast facility for our expanding communications, which we eventually then made into our school of communications. As the School of Communications began to take shape, Quinnipiac continued to expand even more with the acquisition of the School of Law, which already had deep roots in Connecticut. The School of Law at Quinnipiac University goes back many, many years. It actually began in the 1970s as Weathersfield School of Law. Then in the summer of 1977, uh, the Weathersfield School of Law left Weathersfield and it went to Bridgeport and became the University of Bridgeport School of Law. In 92, while we had turned things around, we were going up, Bridgeport looked like Quinnipiac between 82 and 86. They were going in the opposite direction. And uh, financially, they were in trouble, and their law school was going to risk losing accreditation. The law school faculty and administration decided that we needed to um, find another parent institution. I was one of a group of four people who engaged in those discussions. We decided that Quinnipiac looked like the best potential parent institution. We took over the University of Bridgeport Law School. Actually, we signed the final documents on March 18, 1992. We built a 129,000 square feet law school and put them in it starting in 95. And that, at that time, that was our biggest construction project. It was the first time anyone ever built an 800 student law school, it was quite an accomplishment. The first five years, John really focused on academics and the facilities of the physical plant. And then he turned his attention to athletics. In 1995, he hired Jack McDonald. When I arrived, it was Quinnipiac College. It was a good regional college. Uh, it was the Quinnipiac Braves, and it was Division II. There was significant initiatives to change all that when I arrived. We started discussing the possibilities of going Division I, and the president and his great leadership and vision said, let's do it. The general public thinks that the colleges and universities that you compete against athletically are similar to the institutions uh, that you compete academically against. That's not the case, but it's a clear and very strong perception, and one you can't change. Run, red. There was no question in my mind we had to move to Division I. Playing at the Division one level gets you greater visibility, which was important in terms of becoming a national university. I really wanted to strengthen the academic area first, get all that in place. I knew athletics are very powerful in terms of communicating your brand and your image and, and, and your mission. But I didn't want us to be known as an athletic school. I wanted us to be known for the quality of our academics. In the fall of 1998, Quinnipiac made the move to Division I athletics, and a few years later, embraced the Bobcat as the university's new mascot. As the college's reputation grew nationally, a new name was needed to better reflect its academic profile and scholarship. Quinnipiac College became Quinnipiac University. For me, if you're gonna change your name to university, you wanna communicate to people that you're not solely undergraduate, that you have a significant uh, investment in terms of your mission in educating graduate students. 
going from college to university was reflective of size and the student body, undergraduate and graduate, as well as the emphasis on quality. After becoming a university in 2000, the recognition grew broader outside of the region. By the 1990s and early 2000s, the university had outgrown the Mount Carmel campus. During this time, Quinnipiac quietly began to purchase plots of land off Sherman Avenue. Construction began in 2005 on the York Hill campus. The first building, the TD Bank North Sports Center, opened to great fanfare and anticipation on January 27, 2007. This is an exciting day, an historic day for Quinnipiac as we dedicate our new campus, the York Hill campus, and the first building on that campus, the TD Bank North Sports Center. This building is officially dedicated. Please enter your new sports arena. When we opened the TD Bank North Sports Center, that was really the beginning of a major expansion period for Quinnipiac beyond the Mount Carmel campus. We also opened the Rocky Top Student Center and a number of residence halls on York Hill. And all of that was followed by the acquisition of the Anthem Blue Cross property in North Haven. We were able to acquire it less than what it would have cost us to put the Health Science Building up on York Hill. And now we had 600,000 square feet already built. After the North Haven campus renovations were complete, the schools of health sciences, nursing and education opened in 2009. The new campus, with an emphasis on healthcare and the professions, inspired university leadership to consider adding a school of medicine. The idea for the School of Medicine really reflected what was going on nationally in that there was a, a prediction of a severe physician shortage across the country and the Association of American Medical Colleges encouraged the formation of new medical schools. So when Quinnipiac University purchased property in North Haven, they had space that they could bring new programs forward. The Frank H. Netter MD School of Medicine admitted its first class in the fall of 2013. With the opening of the School of Engineering in 2016, Quinnipiac joined a select group of universities with schools of law, medicine, and engineering. Much has changed since the days of the Junior College of Commerce and Larson College. During John Leahy's tenure, Quinnipiac has experienced unprecedented growth and become one of the most compelling stories in higher education. You can't do the things we've accomplished in small bites and here or there. You have to have a clear vision. The main thing I'm proud of is the totality of what we've accomplished. Transforming a small local college into a major national university is something I think not only I, but hopefully all of us, whether we're alums or current students or current faculty or staff or members of the board, can all look back on the last 30 years and be proud of what we've accomplished. I still think Quinnipiac best years are ahead of us and I think we're going to just grow and gain in recognition and academic quality exponentially in the years ahead. Thank you.